Hi, I'm Scott, and today I'm going to show you how I built this custom shadow box on Dad It Yourself. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's uh, Saturday in the shop. I don't get in the shop as often as I'd like. I need to get here more. Did a little cleanup last night. I was actually filming a video. If you haven't checked it out, I uh, released it last night. It's on my YouTube channel. Uh, it's about uh, some batteries. Yeah, I have a couple of those in right there. Yep. So, I'm building another shadow box. I'm not going to film it. Um, I think you guys have probably grown a little tired of some of my shadow boxes. This one isn't special per se in that uh, it's a unique size or shape or anything like that. It's just uh, uh, a box with a lid. Uh, with an integrated uh, shadow box and a little bit of other stuff. But uh, I'll do some stuff in the stories today uh, so you guys can follow along with that. Um, using big box store lumber, that's a piece of uh, 1x12 S4S. Uh, I'm just going to make it out of pine and then, uh, or excuse me, yeah, that's pine, that's ready out of pine. And then uh, stain it to look a little darker. Uh, first job I got to do, I'm going to cut this down into manageable sizes about 24 inches in length and then do a little routing on the uh, router table and then cut those to length and then stain those pieces and hopefully I'll get it into glue tonight so let's get this broken down okay so I got the router table set up pieces are over there they're all broken down I'm going to chamfer 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 the outside top and bottom about three-eighths of an inch maybe a little bit shy of that just to knock off that sharp edge of the box and then I'll switch the chamfer bit out for a half inch dadoing blade and we'll cut a dado on the top and bottom for the top panel and the bottom panel so let's put those over there and get that done Okay, so got all these cut, as you can see, chamfers on all the outsides. And then got the router table set up with a half inch rabbiting bit. And I already cut my test piece right here, three eighths down and three eighths in the full length. This is going to make a mess, I can already tell. And I'm going to put a rabbit on the top and on the bottom of the actual project pieces so one will be for the lid one will be for the bottom and then once the glue's dried and everything i will actually cut the lid off of it using the table saw and then that will have a nice fit to it as well okay let's get those rabbits cut now all right dados are done and i was right i did make a mess the uh, dust collection doesn't work, work really good with dados because it wants to go down, but it really can't because it's over here. So some of it went down there. But I'll get that cleaned up. And the cool part about doing all this milling before I cut these to length or anything is that if there's any blowout on the ends, that's going to all get cut off. So let's get this all cleaned up and start cutting these to length. Got the shop all cleaned up. See, no more sawdust. Router table got put away. Got my miter saw set up. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut miters on this end first and then measure everything to length um, for the box. Uh, normally, I would probably want to use a table saw with a sled, but as you can see, my table saw is not set up for that. So I'm going to use this miter saw, 10-inch sliding, so it'll have no problem with that. And I got a brand new Diablo blade on there, so I'm going to get a nice clean cut. All right, let's get started on that. All right, so I ripped this to width, 17 and an eighth-ish. And I did that on my table saw. How's that for an awesome setup? It's actually pretty secure. 
uh, helps when I have a helper back over here, right over there, grabbing uh, my outfeed. But that's one of my next projects is to build a table saw station. Now I'm going to go ahead and cross cut this right there on those lines using my Husky cross cut guide and a cordless saw. Well, look at there. Panels all cut to size. Got it all dry fit and mocked up. Looks pretty good actually. I'll go ahead and choose the best sides I like for the outsides of the panels. But now, break it all down, sand it all down, and then we're going to stain it before we glue it up. Okay. All right. Everything has been sanded down to 320, wiped down so it's dust free. And I'm going to go ahead and stain it with this Varathane. It's called Provincial. It's kind of a dark, walnutty looking color. And if that doesn't do what I want it to do, I have a couple other stains I can put on top of that to get the tone and the depth I want. So I'm going to go ahead and stain all these sides, let those dry, and then flip them over and do the other sides. All right. What do you guys think about that? been drying for about 45 minutes got a little bit on there but I really like the color I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off the excess flip them over and do the other sides okay stains all done I'm super happy with the colors uh, it's gonna look even better once it has a clear coat finish on it I'll darken that up a little bit more I'm gonna go ahead and precondition these end grains with uh, type on 3 and then put a second coat in and we're going to assemble this thing and get it under glue for the night. All right, wish me luck. Look how good this thing looks. I don't even have clamps on it yet. And everything just kind of snapped together. Uh, oh, wow. I'm super, super happy right now. Uh, let's get some clamps on this. So I've got all the clamps on here. If you don't have a set of these Bessie strap clamps, you need to get some. What I need is actually is I need to get some 36 inch uh, bar clamps or pipe clamps because these spring clamps are maxed out at 24 inch. Fortunately, most of my shadow boxes are 18 by 24. Everything lined up really nice. This thing is square within a 16th of an inch. And I'm going to let that glue overnight. And then tomorrow we start the hard part. So, got the top cut off. Actually has a sweet reveal. I mean, look at this. Oh, talk about a perfect match. That is by far the best way to make a box, is to make a box and then cut the top of it off. And you have a nice grain match. And if there's any wonkiness to your table saw, which, yeah, there's some wonkiness to my table saw. Um, it kind of compensates for that. This wasn't that hard, but it reaffirmed to me that I definitely need a better table saw setup. There it is. So there's the lid, uh, some inside liners. Those are actually going to go in here along this side, and they will hold up a tray that'll slide back and forth in here. And then over there, oh, look at that. Here's a blue liner, and that's going to sit right here on the bottom. So I've got two coats of deft on this right now, waiting for that to dry. I'm going to give that a quick sand at 220, and then probably a third or fourth coat, and then start assembling this thing. 
So today's idea, uh, I'm going to build the tray that sits in the top. That's what that little ledge is for. Found this picture on the internet. It's going to be my inspiration. I'm going to use brass handles instead. And if you can see that little spline detail on there, yeah, I think I'm going to try that too for this one. Uh, I may have to run to Home Depot and uh, get some brass though. All right, let's get started. Okie doke. Well, there's the frame for the tray. And if you can see, it's a little bit proud. So I'm going to have to rip those down. So it sits about a half an inch-ish below that. Let's do that now on the janky table saw. Well, that wasn't so hard. And as you can see, I have a nice little half inch reveal now, holding that down. All right, so what I have to do now, I have to mill the sides. I'm gonna put a chamfer on this. I have to put a rabbit on the bottom for the bottom. And then I have to do some dadoing on the sides. This is gonna have some dividers in it. Okay, you should start getting an idea how this tray is going to look now. Um, handles right there. And then what I need to do is I need to put some dados here and here, splitting this in thirds. There's going to be compartment, 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 and then the compartment in the middle is going to be split horizontally. So let me set up a jig to do those stop dados. Okay, I got those dados cut in there. They came out pretty good. Uh, three pieces of wood right there, about 18 inches long. That's the two long pieces, and then I'll use one of those to do the one that goes between the two. I left the router set up over there so that I could do that piece in there. And then I have my thickness planer out, and we're going to take those pieces right there and shave those down to about half an inch. Here we go. There's all dry fit together. I got all the uh, center um, dividers rounded over, cut to length, and dry fit in there. And the bottom is all dry fit in there. And everything's nice and square, and it looks really good. This needs some sand, some staining, and blue felt for that bottom. All right, so while that's still drying, I was able to knock out the stain on the center dividers on the tray and I pulled the top out and I got the liner all in. You guys can kind of see what's going on there now I'm thinking. That's where the flag's going to go right there and this is going to be stained that same golden oak as the dividers. So I'm going to actually sand these and do that right now. Alright everything's stained. Got the dividers put in there. I'm going to wait for all that glue to dry, and then this gets a triple spray of deft high gloss before I put the handles on it, and then flip it over and do the bottom. Okay, so I'm back on this project. Uh, got all the, what are we calling these, mullions? Uh, I don't know. Got all those installed, glued in. Had to use a couple of brads here and here to hold that down. There's actually a high point right through here as the material gets thicker. But uh, you won't see any of that. So the next step is going to be to actually cut the plexi to fit this size. And then we're going to put these mullions on top of those and drill all the holes for the screws that hold everything together. Let's get on that. Mullions are all in place. Glass is all cut. That's Lexan. And then you can see I've marked nice even spots all the way around in the centers. And then I'm going to drill those with that countersink bit right there. Oh, here's to drilling. So, got the handles put on. That came out really nice. That design was a great idea. And I just got to put the bottom on this thing. So I have all the mullions all drilled out, and I've given them a couple of coats of deft high gloss. Looks sweet. Got the back on there. I'm going to bring that over here now and give it some love with the uh, spray. So I cleaned this up, vacuumed it out, got the flag in there, and then all the memorabilia that the member has given me, and I've kind of placed it in there. Um, I got kind of an empty spot right here, and this something could go right there that would be nice. I haven't figured that out yet, so I'm going to keep playing with it a little more. 
Okay, got everything glued in there. Actually went and grabbed a couple of things from the recipient, uh, that coin right there, and then this lanyard really filled in this spot really nice. Uh, came out really good, I'll tell you. That Ryobi gun right there, that glue gun, is a game changer. If you don't have a glue gun like that, 18 volts, phew, you're missing out. Okay, literally the last step. I've got the tray in here. I actually wax those so they slide back and forth. I've got the lid right there. I've got the back right here. The hinges lined up. This side nice and flush. And now it's just a matter of keeping this square and screwing these hinges down. So this is going to be fun. Okay, moment of truth here. Hinges are in, tops on, trays in, everything looks good. Here we go. Perfect. Couple of last minute uh, add-ons. I put these feet on here. And the final thing I did is add that chain right there. Keep the back from flying off and out. Came out really nice. Look at that. Super happy. So for those of you who follow my channel, you know I build a lot of shadow boxes. But it's these special unique ones that I'm most proud of. Instead of just making a nice rectangle, I get to build something really unique for someone that's really deserving and has served our country. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, put those down below. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in. Subscribe button's right down here. Thanks for watching. Daddy yourself.